Hey guys, what's going on? This is Andrew here today, and we're going to be taking another look at the Dell Optiplex that I looked at in another video. So this is still the exact same computer. I haven't done any upgrades. It's the exact same $50 computer that was showcased in the last video. In a future video, coming very soon actually, I will be adding some more things to this PC to make it more of a gaming PC. But for now, we're going to be focusing on emulation just to see what you can really do by getting this computer as a standalone. So let's get into how this is going to be all set up. All right, guys, so this video is going to be quite a bit shorter than the last one, and it's going to be much shorter than the Razer Phone 2 emulation video that I did because from basically from what I've learned is that the emulators such as the GBA emulator, Dreamcast, and N64 emulator run on basically everything. So at this point, I'm really just going to be looking at the demanding emulators to see what it does. Because at this point, we already know that this thing is more powerful than something like a Fire HD tablet. So I'm not going to waste your time showing you guys emulators that would run without a problem. I'm going to show you guys stuff that may give other computers problems. So we're just going to be focusing on the DS. Uh, Dolphin, which is GameCube and Wii, and PCSX2, which is PS2. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, so we're going to start off testing the DS emulator. We're really not going to do much on this. This is the only game I plan to do because virtually everything else on the DS runs fine. Uh, so what we're testing is Pokemon Platinum since that's a fan favorite. And to get the best performance out of this PC, I'm just going to record externally. So it's definitely not a perfect, perfect experience playing this game on here but it runs very very well i've had very little issues so we're just going to show a quick pokemon battle just to give you guys an idea of how it runs you know there's no frame rate or anything i haven't messed with any settings so i don't really know what there is uh everything's at the default from what you know i got as soon as i downloaded the emulator so nothing has been changed game seems to be running just fine so for all you pokemon lovers out there well this is definitely something that you can play on a computer like this so uh, very satisfactory experience, uh, definitely, as you see here, it's fast, just as it should be on a regular DS, so, without further ado, let's jump to the next game on a different emulator. Alright guys, so we are playing Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness on the Dolphin emulator right now, and basically, uh, what we're doing is we're running it in native resolution. We had to turn on DX11 instead of OpenGL because games just wouldn't load with OpenGL for some reason. So change it to DX11 and I set the emulated clock speed to 40% to make sure that we were able to run the game stably despite having a bit of a lower frame rate. So instead of getting like 30 FPS, we're getting more like an average of 25. So I chose to record in this area because for some reason, this is one of the areas that just seems to be pretty demanding for the most part. So we're just going to finish up this battle and just walk around to show you that it's running stably. It's definitely not a 100% perfect experience, but you know, the fact that it's running this well is very impressive. And this just goes to show that, uh, you know, this computer really can handle stuff like this. So as you can see right now, uh, as you see right here, it seems to be running just fine. I mean, you can see that the frame rate is a little lower than what it would be but i mean the game is running at full speed it is running pretty smoothly and i'd say that this is definitely a good experience so this is one of the more demanding gamecube games uh xd go darkness definitely is one of those but uh other than that i'm really impressed with the experience on here right now i'm doing it in full screen just basically to get the best visuals but we didn't turn up the resolution basically the point of this video is to kind of just get everything playable rather than getting all the niceties so let's look at the next game on the emulator all right, guys, so next up we have The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, and we're doing the exact same thing before, you know, still DX11. Uh, we're still doing the 50, well, actually the 40% emulation speed, and this game is a bit of a different game to talk about compared to XD Gale of Darkness, because that game is more of, like, casual gameplay, and it's, if you're playing at a lower frame rate, it's not a big deal, but something like this, you actually probably want to set that emulation clock speed to more, like, 50 60 or even 70 percent playing it like this is fine right now i mean this game uh normally runs at 60 fps but we're probably hovering more in the 40s and the 50s right now it's still running pretty good don't get me wrong but uh i, I definitely recommend if you're going to play this uh definitely turn that clock speed up a little more it's not to say it's not playable it's 100 percent playable i'm playing it right now and this is definitely a demanding area in the game where normally the frames would drop, especially with all the enemies on the screen. I'm not very good at the game. I mean, I've played through it plenty of times, but I'm kind of just casually just showing what it looks like right now, and things are looking pretty good. 
I'm not gonna lie. So, I mean, there's really not much more to say about this. I mean, it's perfectly playable. It's You're getting the full experience that you, you would get if you played it on the GameCube with a slightly lower frame rate, but that's honestly not the biggest deal in the world. It's pretty cool to be seeing this run on a $50 PC. So, with that being said, guys, Let's jump to the PS2 emulator. All right, guys, so starting off on the PS2 emulator, we have GTA San Andreas, a very popular game and one of the most played games on the PS2. So we are seeing flawless performance right now, just going through on the bike. I've gone through some heavily popula populated areas before too, and it still ran just fine. So obviously you can get this game on the PC and it will run much better, but Right here, you know, playing it through the PS2 emulator just to see what we can do. It is close to flawless. Every once in a while, you'll see a stutter here and there, but definitely uh, something that's not too bad. And I have to say that this is definitely uh, something good to play on the PS2 emulator. All right, guys, so we have Guitar Hero 2 Deluxe, a modified version of Guitar Hero 2 that the GH community made. And basically, this just removes the strum limit and adds some other new features. Right now, we are playing this game in quick play mode, which is basically just instead of playing the story mode, you just play the songs. And we're using the option called focus mode, which takes away the background and improves performance all around. So I feel like this is the best way to play the game if you're going to be doing it on an emulator, and especially if you're going to be doing it on a lower end PC like this. I wouldn't recommend at all enabling the backgrounds at all because it will make a huge impact on performance. And I even recommend possibly even playing in practice mode overall because that has the less, uh, at least the least amount of performance being taken away. So it ran very well and this is how I would have wanted it to. So anyway guys, let's get to the next game. Alright guys, so lastly we have Spider-Man 2 on the PS2 emulator and basically this isn't running too well. I mean it runs and it is perfectly playable but the problem is there's a lot of flashing textures and honestly I really don't know how to fix that that much. But to be fair, I really haven't looked into it or cared to look into it. I'm just kind of trying to test and see how this runs things. I do know, though, that if you play this on the Dolphin emulator, uh, there is a way to change that uh, emulated clock speed. I don't know if there is on the PS2 uh, emulator at all. Haven't really looked for it, or the, although I, well, I did look for it, I just couldn't really find much. But whatever it is, the game is 100% playable. But for some reason, this uh, PS2 emulator, whenever there is areas that seem like or they're, they're going to slow down the computer, the textures end up flashing. This happened in Guitar Hero 2 when I played on my old laptop, so it's happening here with Spider-Man now. But I still am pretty impressed that it's running at all. Uh, it's running better than it did when I tried doing this on Dolphin on my phone, so... Yeah, I mean, it's better than nothing. I just believe that if you guys want to play this game, you could probably look into how to make it run a lot better. Right now, uh, it's not really running uh, too well. It's not running the way that I would prefer it to run. But anyway, guys, let's get to the final verdict. All right, guys, to sum it all up, I have to tell you guys, uh, I am very impressed with how the PC ran all these emulators that I tested today. It was only $50, so to be able to run up to the GameCube, I think is absolutely perfect. I honestly would not recommend running anything higher than the 3DS emulator. You could potentially try some Switch stuff, but I wouldn't try to do any of the very demanding uh, games if you were getting something that was 100% what I'm using right now. The limiting factor in this PC is definitely the 6 gigs of RAM. If I install more, it'd probably run a lot better. On top of that, the lower clock speed on the i5-3470 is definitely also what's going to be limiting the f uh, limiting the performance of the PC as well. But, you know, once I install that graphics card in there and take some of the load off, this, off of the CPU, it's going to help a lot more. But basically, guys, that's everything. Uh, that's just how this PC runs on stock without adding anything new to it. Just getting it as I got from eBay for $50. I think I had a perfect deal just showing that this runs as well as it does. So like I said, don't try running anything too crazy on this thing. This is probably as far as you'll get from what I showed in this video. But like I said, I am very impressed. So uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, guys, I'm going to be putting a graphics card in this thing and potentially more RAM if I feel like it's necessary. Uh, basically, that video is going to have everything. So not only is it going to be having the games that I'm going to be benchmarking, but it's also going to be taking another look back at these games that I tested today. So Keep a lookout for that, guys. I'm getting a 750 Ti, as I mentioned in the beginning, like I said. So uh, I will see you all in the next video. Hope to see you guys soon.